Welcome everybody. In this video, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, sides and angles on the sphere. Because I wanted the, everybody to have a very clear picture uh, what a side of uh, or a line segment on a sphere is and what an angle between two line segments on a sphere is. Uh, what causes sometimes a little confusion is that the sides or line segments on a sphere can also be interpreted as certain angles. So we have two types of angles here, the ones that can be interpreted as sides and those that are honest to goodness angles between sides on the sphere. So that we have clarity from this point on, um, let's actually look at uh, what the distinction between them is. So. Here you see um, a sphere. For us, it's always a unit sphere, so the radius is 1. So this is S2. So the radius is 1. And the center of the sphere, I denote it by O. So what's a side or a line segment on the surface of a sphere? On a sphere, that's uh, a geodesic joining two points on the sphere. So I denoted these two points by B and C, capital B and capital C. And in fact, from now on, I will try to reserve the capital letters for vertices, so for points on the sphere. Um, so, and the geodesic joining two points is of course part of a great circle that goes through these two points. So here I drew part of the great circle that goes through points B and C. So here you see the rest of the great circle. I didn't complete it, but it is a great circle. That means its center is actually the center of the sphere. So here we have, this is a, a line segment uh, between B and C. And um, what is the length of that line segment? As we discussed it before, because this uh, line segment is part of the circumference of a great circle, if I wanted to know if I connected these two points with the center of the great circle, which is the same as the center of the sphere, um, the measure of this angle is this circumference, so the side I'm interested in, divided by the radius. But because the radius is 1, that angle, the measure of that angle here at the center of the sphere is actually exactly equal to this um, side length. So let's just, let's just write this down here. So the side length of, I keep saying side because we're going to soon look at triangles um, and then we'll have sides. But here I can just say the length of the line segment BC is exactly equal to the measure of the angle BOC. That's part of the confusion that sometimes arises when you study this because you see the lengths of line segments are the same as the measures of the angles that the end points of the line segments form with uh, the origin, so with the center of the sphere. So that's something to, to remember, to keep, an, uh, to keep in mind. When I talk about these angles here at the origin, that's really the same as the length of a line segment. However, I could now draw another line segment here uh, at the point C, and by the way, the uh, lowercase letters I will reserve for, I'll try to reserve at least, for the lengths of line segments. Um, and I'm trying to be sort of a nice symmetric here, so between B, the, the, the length between B and C I'll denote it by, by little a. Um, and this angle I also denote it by the same a because the measure of it is equal to this, to this length. But suppose I have another side, so something like this. Again, it's part of some great circle that I'm not going to, to complete here. And then 
these two sides are two circles, two great circles that have certain angle between them. How do we define that angle? Well, that's the angle between tangent uh, lines, um, which I'm going to draw here as, as vectors. So I have the purple vector is tangent to the great circle that goes through BC, and the uh, black vector is tangent to the great circle that goes through C and maybe through some other point. I don't know. Uh, there could be another point A that would complete this whole thing to a triangle. Perhaps I don't. I'm not going to worry at the moment about this point A. Um, so I have a certain angle here, and. Uh, because it's at site, uh, it's, it's sort of at the vertex C, I'm going to denote this angle by, by gamma. So to denote angles between sides on the sphere, I will use Greek letters. So three different types of letters I have to use here. I have vertices, points on the sphere, for which I'm going to use capital letters. I have their lengths, for which I'm going to use lowercase letters. And these lengths are the same as angles at the center of the sphere. And then I have angles between two different line segments on the sphere, and these lengths I will denote by, sorry, and these angles I will denote by Greek letters. Um, let's actually have a closer look at this angle here, because I wanted to interpret this um, as something slightly different. Okay, so. Note that I really what I have here, I want to know the angle between these two uh, tangent vectors. So I have this part, right, BC, lies on the purple great circle, and that arc AC, that geodesic, lies on the black great circle. So I have this purple vector that is tangent to the purple great circle at point C, and I have the black vector that is tangent to the black great circle at the point C. So I really have something like this here. So here what I did was I cut out these two great circles. So first I cut out the, the purple great circle. That's that. Note that the great, it's a great circle, so actually the plane in which it lies goes through the point O, goes through the center of the sphere. And the black one is something that is slightly at an angle here, right? So you can think about this, the purple one as being in the plane of the board and the black one slightly sticking out. Um, so here is the black circle. This is the part that is sort of sticking out towards us. And the dotted part is the part that sticks somewhat inside the, the board. And then um, maybe this isn't really a good picture here. So because it actually sticks inside the board, I would say that the tangent line to the, to the black one goes like this. So you see the angle gamma here. Okay, so it's really like this. Look, I've made this here for you. Two circles. This is the purple circle. And this is the, the, the black right circle. And they intersect at a certain angle, okay? So it's that situation over here where you have the purple one and the black one intersecting at a certain angle and here at the top of it is the point C. So if you look at it like this, you see there is a vector that is tangent to the black one and the vector that is tangent to the purple one. Um, and they form a certain angle. I don't know what angle these, these great circles are to each other, but they are at a certain angle. In particular, you see the black circle lies in a certain plane, uh, and the other circle, the purple one, also lies in another plane. So you can really view this whole situation, this angle, in this way. The purple plane is the plane in which the purple great circle lies, and the black plane is the plane in which the black uh, circle lies lies. And because they both go through the, the center, because they're both great circles, they both go through the center of the sphere, if I connect this point of intersection with that point of intersection, they intersect of course in two spots, right? The other one is the antipodal one. 
and I connect them by a line, that line will go through the center of the sphere. Which means this really is like at the top of that black circle, and that point is also at the top of the, of the purple circle. So what I'm trying to say is that the black vector and the purple vector form right angles with this blue line. Okay, because they're tangent to the sphere, they're tangent to these two vectors, so they definitely form a right angle with this radius, right? This is a radius of both of these circles. And because these vectors are tangent, we know that tangent vectors always form right angle with the radius, right? This radius, look, this radius is both a radius of the black circle and the radius of the purple circle. So the black tangent vector is forming a right angle with it, and the purple tangent vector is forming a right angle with it, right? So again, if these are the two circles here, I'm going to hold them like this. The black one is, is here and the purple one is here. They both form right angle with this, with this line here, with the radius. Which means that this angle is really the same as the angle between the two planes, between these two intersecting planes. Right? That's the angle between this, which forms the right angle with the blue, with the blue part, and, and that, which also forms the right angle with, with the blue part. So, one conclusion here is this, that the angle between two sides on a sphere is the same as the angle between the planes in which the two great circles corresponding to the sides Okay, angle between two sides, so that angle gamma is the same as the angle between these two great circles, the purple one and the black one, which is the same as the angle between the two planes that contain these two um, um, great circles. Okay, uh, once we have that, I wanted us to look at some triangles. triangles on a sphere. That information about the angle being the same as the angle between the planes will be useful soon when we try to do trigonometry. But for now, let's just look at an example. So here, again, is a sphere. And I wanted to look at two particular triangles. Namely, in the first one, I'm going to take the following vertices. One of them will be the North Pole, which I'm going to denote by P. And then I'm going to take one that's sort of just below it. Uh, maybe, well, they're all just below it, so Q. Okay, and here is part of a great circle that goes through it. Then another one I'm going to take here. And um, I want to look at uh, the, the side lengths and the angles here. So first of all, these two Right, these two side lengths, so here is the center of the sphere, what are they? So this length, this length, um, let's just use the letters A, B, C here. C is the North Pole. So then I would denote this because it's across from B by B, 
what is this side length, the, the side length B? Um, so if I connect, remember, this point with the center and that point with the center, that angle here is B. Just by our discussion from a moment ago, right? The length of the side is equal to the angle that these two vertices form with the center, with the center of the sphere. So that's angle B. And what is it? Well, that is completely vertical and that lies in the horizontal plane. So that means B is equal to pi halves. Um, what about this side length? Let me maybe change the color of it. So let's make that purple. Okay. Again, I connect. I connect the the center with this vertex, and all right. So this one is across from A. So I'm going to write a little A for it. What is that angle here? Well, it looks like a lot, but it isn't, right? It's a vertical line, and then this one again lies in the in the plane of the equator. So that angle, which I denote by A, is again pi halves. What about the third one? So that's going to be this. Well, because it's opposite from from this. Uh, C here, I'm going to use lowercase c to denote its length, and that's this angle here. Okay, and uh, I can of course make this as wide as I want, so I actually will choose, so I choose c to be pi halves. Okay, so I have, so this is also pi halves. In my picture, there's nothing really forcing me to be for this to be pi halves. I can just keep moving these points around the equator and get different angles, but I just choose it to be pi halves. Okay, why do I choose it to be pi halves? Because this thing now, ABC, is an equilateral triangle. So, ABC is a well, spherical in the sense it lies on the sphere equilateral triangle. What should be the angles in an equilateral triangle? On a plane, it's 60 degrees, right? So pi thirds. Well, let's see what it is here. How do I get the angles? Well, remember, the angles now are the angles between tangent lines. So where do I start? Well, if I start right here, I want the angle between this vector and that vector. Ah, but what is that angle? So this is, um, I'm going to denote this angle, what's a good letter for it? Well, how about, so I'm going to use now Greek letters, that's gamma. All right, I should have really denoted it between the tangent vectors, right? That's gamma. But remember, we just discussed it. An angle between two sides on a sphere is the angle between the planes in which the great circles that give it the two sides lie. What are the great circles? Well, here is a quarter of the great circle, that blue one, and the purple one is another quarter of that great circle. So I have a plane here. I have this plane, right? That if I want, this is just a bit of this plane. That's like one bit. And then there's the purple plane that kind of goes like this, right? And the question is, what is the angle that these two planes form with each other? Well, it's going to be, if I, so if I look at, if I, look, if I use the, 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 the plane of the equator, it's going to cut these two planes perpendicularly to them. So I can just look at the angle that the, that the two lines form when I, when I have cut this by the plane of the, of the equator, so that is the angle between them. Also, that's the same as C in this case. 
So that angle is actually um, pi halves. Right? Again, I mean, how did I choose that? Remember, I chose this to be pi halves. But in this case, this angle is the same as the angle between this plane and that plane. So it's also pi halves. But there are other angles. So here, um, here's one, and here's one. Oh, but that's actually quite easy, right? Because the red vector lies uh, in the in the plane of the equator, and the the um, blue vector is vertical. In other words, again, the the, 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 the angle between these two vectors, which I now denote by alpha because it's next to the vertex A, is the, is the angle between the plane, the blue, the plane in which this bit lies, and the plane of the equator in which this great circle lies. Oh, but that's a vertical plane and that's a horizontal plane, so that angle is also 90 degrees. Finally, what about B? Um, well, the same situation happens here, right? This is a vertical plane. It sort of looks like this. While the, this other plane is the plane of the equator. So they kind of intersect this way. Right? You have the vertical, you have the vertical plane uh, of the, the purple one. And this, this one here is the plane of the equator. So the angle is also... 90 degrees. So this angle, a good name for it would be beta because it's next to the vertex B. So this angle is also pi halves. Oh, okay. So what I have here, this is quite a beaut. Yeah? It's an equilateral triangle on the sphere. Equilateral. Each of the sides has length pi halves and each of the angles is a right angle. So I have a 90, 90, 90 degrees, equilateral triangle. Okay, so let's uh, step back for a second. I made this whole tirade a moment ago about distinguishing between angles that are the lengths of the sides and angles that are angles between the sides. I said there are two different things. The length of the side is that angle at the center of the sphere. But the length between two sides is the length between tangent lines, which then is the length is the is the angle between the planes. However, here they're just all the same. And in fact when I was trying to compute the first angle, which I think was C, I actually sorry not C but the angle gamma was sort of like just projecting it down. You see I got the same thing as C. So maybe I shouldn't make that distinction. Maybe these angles are always the same. So there's no, there are no two different types. No, it just so happens that this triangle is very special. Because let's look at another triangle. And I want to make... I want to again look at an equilateral triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to choose three points, A, B, oh, that's too curvy, and C. OK, uh, my point is, so I'm choosing all these to be the same length. So this is an equilateral triangle. So this length I would denote by little c, this by little a, and this by little b, but I have a equal to b equal to c. I can make such a choice. So this is an equilateral triangle. But this triangle is small, and that's my point. So first of all, because it is small, 
these angles are small. So this is a small triangle compared to the size of the sphere. So A, B, C are close to zero. They are greater than zero, but close to zero. And what are the angles? Well, remember one of the principles we talked about last time. If I take something really small on the sphere, a small piece of a sphere compared to the, to the size of the sphere, then everything looks as if it was flat, as if it was part of a plane. So that means this equilateral triangle, you see these really are parts of great circles, but they almost look like straight line segments, which means this triangle looks kind of like an equilateral triangle on a plane. And I know what the angles of an equilateral triangle on a plane are. There are 60, 60, 60. So pi thirds, pi thirds, pi thirds. Now, this is not exactly a, pla a planar triangle. There's some little curvature to it. But because it's so close to being planar, the angles are close to being 60. So, and because it is small, the angles, which I now denote, so next to A, alpha, next to B, beta, and next to C, gamma. Remember, these are angles between tangent lines. I'm sort of suppressing the tangent lines from the picture there because you wouldn't be able to see them. So, and alpha equal to beta equal to gamma is approximately pi thirds. Why? As the triangle is approximately a planar triangle. So it looks like a triangle on the plane. Um, so, are then these angles the same? No, right? The, the, the Greek angles and these, which can be interpreted as, as, as the angles uh, with the great circles, they are not the same because these, side, these ones are actually quite small, right? If I connect this with the center, this is a small angle. Equal, in this case, to C. While alpha, beta, gamma are not small angles, they're just decent size, 60 degrees. So not always are they, are they the same thing. In that other case, it was just so special. But look at another thing here. So I constructed for you here two equilateral triangles. One of them has angles close to 60 degrees and the other one has all right angles. So not all equilateral triangles on the sphere have the same angles. So which of them do? Do any of them have the same angles? We'll be able to answer.